Hey everyone, today I want to show you how to bring out color in a naturally kind of dull sky where there's color there, you saw it when you were there in person, but the picture just doesn't capture it. I'm going to show you how to really make that pop. Hello and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today I want to show you how to bring out color in a dull sky. I'm working with a raw photo that I captured in Sedona, Arizona not long ago. And when I took this photo, I could see the color in the sky. There was this beautiful pink, but the raw image looks a bit flat and dull. And I'm going to show you how to bring out that natural color. We could certainly do a sky replacement in this instance as well, but sometimes it's nice to have a picture that actually represents what it was like when you were there. So that's what we're going to work with today. I want to take, say, take a moment and say hello to Harry. So glad you're here today. Good to see you. Hello, Russ. All right, so let's go ahead and start working on this image. I'm going to start with Enhance AI. This is going to bring up some of those shadows, give us a little bit of contrast, and you can see that's already starting to improve that color. You can go ahead and bring that up right about there. You can also use Sky Enhancer, and you can see that that's starting to warm up some of those sky tones, and it's really, really targeting this area and bringing out some of that color. From there, I'm going to go down to our color tab and we can also pop our vibrance. Vibrance is going to go after the less saturated colors. So we have a lot of green happening down here and these reds and oranges, but the sky is the less saturated section. So that's going to bring that out a little bit. Right about there looks good. Hello, Cynthia. So glad you're here today. All right. From there, I want to go ahead and scroll down to the color harmony section. And this is where we can really start to have some fun and make the sky pop. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up that brilliance a little bit. And right now you'll notice that's affecting all of the colors in the image. And if we wanted to just impact the sky, this is where we're gonna to have to start using some brush strokes. We'll come back to that in a minute. I'm gonna go down to my split color warmth. And here we can target our warm tones and our cool tones separately. I'm gonna to go to my warm tones and I'm gonna warm those up a little bit more. Look at what that's doing to the image and look at what it's doing to the sky. It is absolutely gorgeous color. Now, if you bring that up really high, obviously it starts to get very intense. And you can see that it's starting to really affect our foreground. This isn't what we want, but this looks pretty nice. So what I'm gonna do is grab my masking brush and one moment. Sorry about that, folks. All right. So I'm gonna grab my masking brush and I'm going to remove this effect from the foreground. So I'm gonna choose the eraser and then I'm gonna make my brush really, really, really big. I'm using the bracket keys on my keyboard and I'm gonna go ahead and just brush this in here on the foreground to remove that effect. And I'm using a huge brush because there's not a whole lot of detail work you need to do down in this bottom section and that gets that brushed in really fast. So there we have it. And now we can go ahead and make that brush size smaller and go ahead and clean up some of this other area so we're not getting too much of that extra color that we don't want on those hillsides because they're already so br brilliant and beautiful on their own. We don't really need a whole lot. And this way, this lets us preserve that great color in the sky without having the extra here in the foreground. So let's go ahead and take a look here at our before and our after. And that just really makes that sky come alive. You can always push that brilliance a little bit further and maybe even warm that up a touch more. And that just looks so, so beautiful. Hello, Joseph, glad you're here today. All right, so let's go ahead and finish off this image by working a little bit with our foreground as well. I wanna go ahead and pump up some of the contrast here. I'm gonna go to structure, pull up that amount, and that's gonna bring out some really nice depth and detail, that mid-tone contrast here in the foreground. I also wanna go back to my color tool and work with some of these greens. Right now, I feel like they're a little bit too bright. We can tell that this is a sunset, the light was getting low, and the fact that they're so bright right now looks a little bit unnatural. So I'm gonna go down into the HSL section and choose my luminance, which controls the brightness, the lightness and darkness of individual colors. And we're gonna take those green tones and we're gonna pull them down to the left. And you can see how that's affecting this area down here and just targeting those trees. Now there's a little bit of cyan in those as well. 
and darken that down a bit. Now, if we start targeting the yellows, which when we interpret, our eyes interpret green, there's actually a lot of yellow. But keep in mind, we've got a lot of yellow going on up here too. So if we darken the yellow here, it's going to affect everything in the image. So just be careful as you go through this. When you're working on targeting one section, just realize that there's those tones in all different areas of the image. Um, if you want to darken this down a little bit further down here, you can do a couple of different things. Um, you can either go to your dodge and burn, or you can go over to local masking. I like to do this better. This is a little faster and easier for me. Go to add basic, and I'm going to choose a gradient mask, and I want it to just affect this foreground area here. So I'm going to take this and draw this at an angle, right about like so, and then grab my exposure slider and darken down that foreground. There we go. And that's just going to give us some extra depth and kind of take us from that front part of the image, lead us to this beautiful red rocks and out to that gorgeous, gorgeous sunset. Now it's not the most typical gorgeous sunset in that we don't have the clouds. I would have loved to have had clouds, but at least we got some really nice color in the sky. And that really is very similar to how I remembered it. One last thing I wanna address here is if we go, as we've, since we've darkened down the sky and brought a lot of color and contrast into that area, we can see that we have some lens vignetting here in the corners. And that's just a result of my lens. You can easily fix that down here in the optics tool by choosing this auto distortion correction. Give that a second to calculate. And that should take care of those darkened edges and straighten things out a bit. If it still needs a little bit more, you can go down to the advanced settings and use a little bit more de-vignetting to blend that out. There we go. All right, guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this session on how to make a dull sky look more colorful, bring out those natural colors. It works especially well for raw files. So go out there, take some photos, give this technique a try. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up here on YouTube. We always love seeing that. And I want to wish you a great rest of your day. See you next time. Bye, everyone.